Hello everyone and uh, welcome to re-entry. In this video we will be going through how to uh, execute a circularization burn in the Gemini spacecraft. So currently I'm in uh, an orbit of uh, 120.5 nautical miles of altitude and uh, with a perigee of 84.2 nautical miles of altitude. And today I wish to uh, go ahead and circulate this orbit at uh, apogee. Uh, which basically means that once I reach the highest point of altitude, I will need to fire my engines in a specific direction for a specific duration of time to reach a delta velocity vector, uh, which would take me on to a circular trajectory, which basically would mean that once I'm at apogee, I will raise perigee up to uh, uh, this same altitude as my apogee is right now, so 120.5 nautical miles of al altitude. So that means that uh, I will enter a circular orbit. Right now I'm in a, an elliptical orbit, uh, so to get into a circular orbit there's a couple of steps that you need to first verify. Uh, first of all, uh, we are going to be using the OBC to execute the burn. So uh, on the platform uh, here, I will be in my Ceph position, that's the sharp and forward. And on my attitude control, I will be on platform just to make the computer control my attitude. And uh, lastly, on the computer section, I wish to be on the catch up uh, uh, module here. And this catch up module is basically the software designed to execute any burn in the uh, Gemini spacecraft with uh, the exception of the retrograde burn which will deorbit us and take us through the atmosphere uh, but the other burns which are done uh, by mission objectives uh, by mission requirements in orbit to do different stuff uh, you will need to be in the catch-up module and the catch-up module will take 10 minutes to load so if you're uh, changing from uh, ASC into catch up or from rendezvous to catch up, then you will see a green light here indicating that uh, the tape that contains all of the software is loading uh, the catch up module into the computer memory. And that typically takes 10 minutes. But if the software is complete, this uh, green light would be extinguished right, uh, as it is right now. So I'm currently running the catch up module and I will need to uh, execute a specific burn. So first of all, I will need to request the burn and you can do that by either, either pressing the circulate PE or AP buttons or a rendezvous burn here. That's uh, some quick steps which are made available for VR players. But also in the mission tools, you can go ahead and select which burn you would like to do on the ground section and request burns. Data forms got the catch-up maneuver pad. Uh, in the previous video, I went through how to fill out this uh, uh, maneuver pad. So for every burn, you would typically like to fill this out. Uh, in this video, I will do that, but I'm going to do it very quickly, and uh, I'll refer to the the video that uh, that covers that. So, uh, as I said, I'm going to request an AP circulation burn, which means that at Apogee, we will uh, perform a burn that raises perigee. So I'm going to go ahead and say, uh, click the request AP circularization burn. Roger, DCS. And the burn itself should now be uplinked via a DCS message. And you can see that I received a DCS message. So I'm going to go ahead and acknowledge that. And I'm going to uh, Prefer, uh, prepare a, a burn at 1 hour and 5 55 uh, minutes into the seconds and then 24 seconds with a delta V of 65.47 uh, feet per second. So the uh, burn itself and uh, I'm going to open up the uh, pad, that's a ketchup maneuver pad, and I'm going to quickly fill this out. Um, so this is an uh, Apogee circularization burn, that's the APC, and uh, it's the RCSOBC. And the burn will happen at uh, 00155 and uh, 24 uh, seconds. 
24 seconds and 22, so 24.22 seconds. And uh, it's uh, delta V of uh, 65.5. Uh, feet per second in the positive x-axis. So 6, 5.5. 5. Uh, the rest is all zero. So now I'm going to uh, set up the burn on the computer. So uh, the first one is uh, core 1. That's the uh, hours and minutes of uh, the ignition time. And it's always good to pay attention to the current mission time which is available on the center panel here and to see kind of how far you're currently in the mission we're at zero hours and 40 minutes so the burn is quite far ahead so we have a lot of time to prepare for prepare for it so uh core one zero one should be zero zero one five five enter and if i now go into zero two and i hit readout you can see that the data is already uh, uplinked to the OBC by the DCS message. So all I need to do is to actually go in and verify that these data are matching the data points on my pad. So 02 is 02422 uh, two. and uh, clear and core 25 it's 00654 and let me verify that with uh, my transcript 654 and the pad itself uh, is uh, 654. This means that I will need to uh, uh, use my eraser and make sure that I type correctly. 654 and 26 should be uh, 0, 27 should also be zero. And if you see a leading nine ahead of all the zeros, this means that the data should be zero. The nine is a minus, negative, while a zero in this third digit on this section here means that the burn is a positive value. So zero is plus, uh, nine is negative. Uh, okay, and that's everything. Uh, we now know that the pad is correctly inserted in our computer. And all that's left is to go ahead and hit start on the computer. And this will now show me a uh, delta V vector. And this is the delta V vector that this burn wants us to perform at, at the given uh, ignition time. That's the GETI section. So do not zero these IVIs before you hit that uh, time of ignition or else you will be going into the wrong orbit. So wait for ignition time and then zero the IVIs. Okay, so how do we figure out when our ignition time is? Well, there's a couple of things that you could do. You could either remember that our burn was going to happen at, uh, was it one hour and 55 minutes? So we see one hour, 55 minutes and 24 seconds. So you could look at this and then perform the burn, zero the IVIs, and the burn would be complete. Uh, you could also go ahead and set up the computer uh, to show you the time left, which basically is core 83. So 83 contains the time left to uh, ignition, and that's 71 minutes and 59 seconds. Every time you hit readout, you will see that it counts down. So what I'm going to do now quickly is to use the event timer to help me count down towards the burn. And typically uh, you would set this to 20 minutes. There we go. And then I'm going to decrease the seconds. So I zero everything out at 20 minutes, zero, zero. Uh, I'm going to... Uh, set the timer to stop and I'm going to set the direction to down. This will basically uh, count down uh, towards zero at uh, 20 minutes. So now I'm going to uh, use time scale until I'm getting about 20 minutes away from the burn. I can even go faster. There we go. 20, 4, 
14, 13, 12, 11, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, go. And now this one should be counting down towards the burn and they should be quite similar. Which they are. So everything that I now need to do is to make sure that um, I'm in a decent attitude ahead of the burn. Uh, I know that this is a prograde burn because a positive x-axis burn on the pad itself. As you can see, it's a plus, remember the zero here, plus 65.4, which means that our burn uh, will be prograde and that's the direction that I'm facing. It doesn't really matter what attitude you are in. So if I now go into rate command and I change my attitude, you can see that it's changing where, uh, in what direction my burn should happen. So once you get closer to the ignition time, then all of these values will shift towards this prograde attitude because I'm now very prograde. So I'll go ahead and make sure that I'm all prograde here. That's zero on the F die. And then I'll continue my time scale. One thirty-seven. Count down ten minutes. I'll leave four minutes for now. And you can see that most of the burn has now shifted to my forward part, and I'll time scale it until one minute. There we go. One minute uh, mark. Now see that most of this burn is now in the prograde direction. It doesn't need to be 100%. Don't try to use uh, the jets and or waste fuel and trying to zero out everything here. It's very easy to just do that in the burn itself. Uh, you All that you uh, want to do is to zero the IVIs. But this means that I'm going to, to reach the target right now. I'm going to burn 65 feet per second prograde and I will need to uh, burn 1 feet per second to the left and 3 feet per second upwards. And if I do that at ignition time, then um, my orbit should match the target and uh, my velocity should match the delta V vector that we had. Then 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, ignition. Thirty feet per second left. Remember, the uh, bur uh, estimated burn time was about thirty-two seconds uh, in the prograde direction. Ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, go. And uh, you can notice that uh, the tool itself the IVIs are missing one last digit in the burn. So there's some rounding happening here. Uh, but you can use the map uh, view to uh, kind of burn off any of the last remaining residuals. But notice that my uh, orbit is now at 1 to 0 0.7 nautical miles of altitude uh, in apogee. And at perigee, I'm at 120. 3.3 nautical miles of attitude, which is a very circular orbit. Uh, it doesn't need to be perfect, but the better you can get it, the better of course, but uh, a burn in space is never 100% perfect. Uh, so I think that this was a pretty decent burn. And since we're talking about circularization, please remember that you also got the opportunity to uh, request a perigee burn. 
and uh, I'm just going to quickly show you what this data looks like and this is going to be a very short burn so what I'm going to do now is to just continue my burn a little bit to raise uh, the old perigee and uh, this is uh, also a point of confusion so if you're in a very circular orbit where perigee and apogee basically match and you say that I want to make this burn even more perfect or that I want to perform a burn at apogee then you would reach the apogee point and you would perform the burn and you would see that apogee kind of just continues to raise and this is because you know you're at apogee but once you start the burn that old apogee point is now perigee which means that you're raising the new apogee point which is 180 ish uh, degrees away in in your orbit phase. So if you see that you reach apogee and you burn and you see that apogee raises, uh, this is uh, not an issue with the simulation itself or my orbital mechanics uh, in, in this simulator. This is the, simply that apogee shifts, shifts to the other side of the orbit and then starts to increase. So now I want to perform a perigee burn. So I'm going to go ahead and hit uh, PE circulation burn. Roger, DCS. And this now calculates the burn that I will need to perform at uh, at perigee to lower apogee down, so that my orb orbit would return to 120.5 nautical miles of altitude. And if I hit Roger now, you can see that. Uh, this is the ignition time and this is the delta V but the delta V is it needs to be in a certain direction so now if I go to the pad you will notice that the mission time is 3 hours 26 seconds and 47 uh, 3 hours 26 minutes and 47 seconds uh, with a delta V of negative 29.8 so remember that 9 uh, is negative this means that you will need to type nine zero so I'll, I'll just show you that on the OBC uh, the core for x-axis is 25 that's on the pad and uh, if I now hit readout you will see nine zero two nine eight this is minus 29.8 feet per second in the local vertical x-axis at the time of ignition if we would perform this burn, basically get to this countdown burn and uh, perform the burn itself. After every single burn that you've done, it's always important to hit reset. And if you change any of these orbital parameters, either man manually or through a DCS like I have now, you will need to make sure that you hit reset and then start again to recalculate everything. If you would just leave the comp computer running, and you would request a new burn, then some things might change, but everything is going to be wrong because you haven't you know, restarted the entire program that calculates and executes the burn for you. Uh, what happens in the computer is that it takes the burn data, which is in 25, 26, 27, and the time of ignition at 0, 01 and 0, 02, calculates the uh, direction of the burn, and then enters a closed loop function that allows the IVIs to update itself uh, with this burn vector relative to the direction of your spacecraft. So if you don't restart the program, then there will be some wrong things internally because you haven't kind of done the initial routine that happens if you press start. Because start, calculate, update the IVIs based on what it calculated. So that's very important. So this is basically how you perform uh, orbit circulation uh, maneuvers. And in the next video, I will be going through how to perform a plane change burn. So with that, I uh, thank you for watching and I uh, hope you to uh, see you in the next few videos. I hope you liked this video as well. And if you did, uh, please let me know if you didn't uh, also leave the feedback in the comment section and hit that like and uh, subscribe button. Thanks again